Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you an updated version of a fluffy brow using a new product by Urban Decay. This is not sponsored, but I wanted to try it. And this is my natural brow state. And then this is what it looks like having used that product and my favorite brow pen. So I'm going to show you how to achieve this today. If you are wondering what eyelashes I'm wearing, I did a tutorial on how to apply these eyelashes, which I will link on screen for you. That went up last week. If you missed it, go check that out. But today is all about the fluffy brows. Now I know fluffy brows have been in for a little while and I have shared this technique before but I've never used this brow gel. So let's get straight on with today's tutorial. As I said, I am using this new product by Urban Decay. This is the Slick Day Brow. Now there are two main aspects about this particular product that I think stands out compared to other products that are on the market. Firstly, it's the comb. This comb really does make getting every single hair coated super fantastic but it also slicks down the brows at the same time because it's so thin the teeth are also so close together that it really does go through every single hair so i always like to start with combing the hairs in the opposite direction and downwards in order to coat the hairs on the back side of the hairs so that when you do comb them upright and you're then coating the front of them the back of them has something that is sticky that will then stick to the skin the second aspect about this brow gel that makes it different is that it isn't crunchy because it has a water-based wax so it doesn't have that crispy finish to the brows which I think most people really dislike about having the fluffy brow look. Most gels are crispy and this one is not but it does have that hold so it's a really nice iteration of a brow gel uh, that has been modernised to 2024 as opposed to parroting what we've already seen from other brands. So we've coated the back side of the hairs, we've then combed them upright. Notice that I've combed them at a slight diagonal rather than completely vertical. I feel like that gives the face a very surprised look. So we are going at a very slight diagonal. This will help give a softer finish. Then I'm going to use this brow tool by Anastasia Beverly Hills just to flatten the hairs against the skin. And what I really like about this formula is because it is a water-based wax, you are able to go back in and re-manipulate the hairs before they set in place. And it is buildable slightly and it doesn't give that white cast or like a flaky finish to the brows. I have only layered the back half of the brow twice. I haven't gone in with too much product. Again, because the bristles are quite close together, you're not left with a ton of product on the brows, which I personally think is much better. So you can see the difference between the two brows and now I'm going to go in with my second brow. I like to do one while the other one's drying in place because then once it's dried I can go in with my pen. You don't want to apply it and then go straight in with your pen because the wax itself won't have set in place therefore it's going to coat your brow pen and probably ruin it. So do the brow gel on both of your eyebrows first and then go in with whatever brow product that you're going to be filling them in with. I mean you don't even have to fill them in. You can see here this definitely makes the natural eyebrow look much fuller. I just feel like it has less structure. The tiny gaps definitely need fill in to give you more of a visual shape to the brow. However, it's all down to personal preference and you do whatever you like. So I've coated the brow. I'm now going back in with my brow tool to flatten that and I'm gonna leave that to dry while I move back onto my first eyebrow. So I'm still gonna use my Urban Decay brow blade. I've used this for many, many years now, maybe five or six years. It's definitely my favorite. It has a pen on one side and a pencil on the other. The pencil rarely ever gets used. I could definitely do a spoolie on this end rather than a pencil, but that's just my preference. So starting at the very front of the eyebrow, I'm going to start at the base and do some light flicks upwards just to fill in the very bottom for a more defined base. You can see here minimal work has really made that baseline look fuller. I'm then going to do exactly the same but on the top half of the brow so I leave the center because that's where my natural hair lays and all I'm trying to achieve here with a pen is to even out the fullness where there is sparseness and the sparseness for me is at the very top and a little bit at the base. So by filling in these, you can see I'm getting a more even shape. If I was to drag the pen throughout the center as well, I'm kind of defeating what I'm trying to achieve here because I would then also need to re-darken the top and re-darken the bottom. The idea is just to fill in where you are missing natural hairs. Every few steps, I take a little break for a second and just look in the mirror and make sure I'm achieving the shape that I want without over filling in. I'm using a super light hand as well, I must stipulate this because if you press too hard you're not going to find it as easy to mimic hairs, instead you'll get quite a thick pen line which you don't want. As you can see here at the tail of my eyebrow I've changed the direction of the hairs and I'm putting them down at an angle, so still slightly diagonal but I'm extending the tail slightly. 
Where I've brushed the hairs out to give the tail a little bit more fullness, it means we've lost a little bit of length. So we're gonna put that back in with the very tip of the pen. Try your best not to necessarily color this area in. You still want tiny hair stroke marks. And then also don't be afraid to go back in with your spoolie and comb over it. The hairs are in place. If they do happen to move, you can always go back in with your brow gel, but don't be afraid to go back in and just soften the pen. You don't want it to look too much like you've drawn your brows in. That's where the spoolie will help you because it will just soften the lines ever so slightly. So I'm gonna stop here on this brow and move on to the second brow and then we can do any tweaks that we need to make sure they're nice and even at the very end. So here you can see the before and after. It's not actually a humongous difference. It's given more volume to the brow and it's subtly defined the shape, but because we haven't filled in through the center of the brow where the natural hairs lay, it looks just like my brow because it's almost identical in color. Had I drawn into the hairs that were already laying down, it would have changed the color, it would have made my brows darker and that would have been a bigger transformation and I don't want them to be darker. It's definitely a transformation from how my natural brows lay before I put the gel in, but obviously once the gel is in place, it's not a humongous difference. It really just is redefining that shape. I hope that makes sense. Depending on how sparse your brows are, if they are similar to mine, you really only need to target the top and the base, and that really will make a transformation to the shape of your brows. Again, if your brows are a lot sparser compared to how mine are, then you feel free to go in through the center. You might need to do that. I'm just talking about that if your hairs lay flat to the skin through the center and then nice and full through the center, you might only need to target the top and bottom. So again, it really is down to personal preference and what you can achieve with your natural brow shape. I do understand that a lot of people have a lot sparser brows and that's why these pens are fabulous because you really can fake the appearance of additional hairs that aren't actually there. I personally don't wear fluffy brows on a regular basis. I know this is more of a trend and this is something I want to create for you guys, but I never tend to really wear a brow gel until I've filled my brows in and then I just give them something to kind of keep the tail end in place. I go for a much softer finish, but this is quite the transformation from where I started. So I hope you like it. I hope it's something that you'll find useful if you are somebody that likes a bit more of a laminated finish. As you can see, having fluffier brows with fuller eyelashes really does help to balance out that area of the face. I feel like brows really frame the face, so they are important. In order to be able to wear a full lash like this, it really does work better with fuller brows. So hopefully you found that useful. I understand brows are very personal to each person. So I really hope you still took something away from this tutorial. If you have any questions on this method or you want to try any of the products that I've recommended, everything will be in the description bar. There is a comment section and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me them there. You can also pop me a DM over on Instagram. I tend to be a little bit more active there on a daily basis. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this tutorial a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it really does help with the algorithm. Subscribe if you are new to my channel. It's free to do so. I upload weekly and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.